relax, relax. This is my African brother right here. Let's go. What's up? Let's go. Yeah. What's up? Get the up. Don't do yeah, my African brother. Yeah, my African brother. What's up? I'm African, but I ain't no brother of your son. Very soon, we will witness one of the biggest rivalries in the history of the middleweight division and world's best league in particular. Permanent champion, even without the belt, in the face of the last style bender, will try to conquer the middleweight gold for the third time, and the one to help him with that will be his fellow countrymen. On August 18th at UFC 305, there will be a clash between Israel Adesanya and Drikas Duplessis. Get comfortable as you are about to see an epic promo for this fight. There was another guy who tried to take my shine. He lost his shine, now I have your shine. You didn't get into the cage tonight, but Israel Adesanya, get your back in the UFC so we can settle the score. He still did what he did, and I'm still gonna test that out. Hey, yo! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a mutual disdain between these elite class fighters developed a long time ago. It's just the fact that nobody really paid attention to it. After the Avatar cleaned out the entire middleweight division, Alex Pereira arrived in the world's best league, who, so to say, returned from the past and became the main object of the champion's focus. Drikas Duplessis, in turn, was just getting started inside the octagon and expressed his ambitions, aspirations and intentions only verbally. All he could bet on was them having the same nationality and nothing else. As it turned out, it wasn't enough for the matchmakers and Adesanya himself to take the contender on the winning streak seriously. Well, I mean, did those belts ever go to Africa? As far as I know, it came to America and New Zealand. I'm going to take a belt to Africa. I'm the African fighter in the UFC. Myself and Cameron, we breathe the African air. We wake up in Africa every day. We train in Africa, we're African born, we're African raised. We still reside in Africa, we train out of Africa. That's an African champion and that's who I'll be. For the most part, it was the very ground for this entire hype, conflict, whatever you want to call it, that set both athletes on fire, which was only getting bigger for this whole time. As you can see, this is exactly what led to such harsh words from Israel in the octagon and his aggressive behavior. I never questioned his ethnicity. I never said he's not African. Even though colonization, we don't want to go over there and all that stuff. Yeah, he, is, he is an African because he was born in South course. Africa. And I never questioned that. But the fact that he was being a, a dickhead and, oh, we do be who the real African is, you know, I breathe African air, all that kind of stuff. I'm like, how the fuck are you going to question me, Francis, and Kamaru's blackness, our Africanness? Like, what the fuck are you? So I had to put that out there and just, I, I, want, to, I want to educate him. The starting point of this rivalry happened to be an intense face-off of these two inside the octagon. But it was in July of 2023, and since then, it has been more than a year. Why did we have to wait so long? It's quite simple. By that time, Drikas was just becoming a contender, getting rid of Robert Whittaker. While the champion was already set to fight Sean Strickland in September. I want to whoop that. Uh, I want to whoop his ass so bad. I want to whoop his ass so bad. I want to do it in South Africa or Nigeria. And there's this. Uh, but he's got to do work. He's got to do something. Show me something so I can whoop that ass and I can show you history. I'll, I'll remind you because you got to choose your words wisely, wisely when you speak on people that have come before you. People that paved the way for you, you gotta pick your words wisely. You wanna try and be a big boy, you want to bamba. So, on paper, everything looked like this. The last style bender beats a talkative American, and at the end of the year, or at the beginning of the next one, 
we are going to see another title defense of Israel Adesanya against Duplessis. However, things unfolded differently. An unexpected and convincing victory of Strickland over Israel turned everything upside down. As a result, the belt went to the American psycho who handed it over to the South African fighter in his very first title defense. That's what the fans want to see. I want to give the fans the fights like we saw tonight. Once again, a performance of the night, I think we got five of the night, which is amazing, that's extra 50k. But... For this whole time, Israel Adesanya was building himself back up and when he expressed his desire to come back into the game, the world's best league did not hesitate and put him against Drickers Duplessis in the title bout. South Africa and the whole African continent trying to put that together. We're going there too. Just, just a matter of time. I mean, you know, people have been anticipating no, Africa. Yeah. We'll go. We're going. Okay. You're brilliant. Good. You're yeah. fucking brilliant. Yeah. That's a great question. Not that long ago, there was the first press conference featuring fighters of this event, which made a lot of noise due to some big statements from both sides. Look, I've, I've been here, bought the t-shirt, done it twice. Um, yeah, it's not really about that. For me, it's taking on the best warriors from different lands and, yeah, putting them on my record. I've never beaten Drickers Duplessis, so beating him is what attracts me to this fight, not the belt. So those who have never ever been in our shoes will never understand that mindset. So yeah, fuck the belts, I'm coming for heads and I stick with that. Yeah, no, for me, you know, calling it tension, there's no tension for me. Uh, I, get into the, I get into the octagon and I do my job, I do my business. You can be the biggest asshole in the world, you can be the nicest guy in the world, I'm going out there to kill you. And I hope you're doing the same to me because otherwise it's not going to be a good night for you. We've had history. Uh... Over the years, it's almost like destiny, because we met in the staff and festive room in Thailand, Tiger Muay Thai, back in the day. Had a little little play around, and funny enough, here we are again. It's like full circle, back where it all started for me. So, And also, again, he tried to discredit the Three Kings and say that he's the real, true African champion. And I was just like, it's a weird mindset, bro. Like, he came in the UFC. I knew who he was a little bit, but I didn't go, oh, who the fuck's this? fake dude coming in. I just so cool, there's another African in the UFC. But then him discrediting me, Francis Ngannou, Kamaru Usman, that ticked me off a little bit. So that's what started this. But again, I'll finish it. I don't really give a fuck where he's from, but I'll show him who he is. And now we are about to see an epic and teeth shattering clash between two masters of their craft who genuinely want to hurt each other and deliver us unforgettable emotions. Uh, right now, he's talking about so much outside of the sport instead of talking about what's going on in the sport that, you know, he's, um, you know, I don't know. In, in my opinion, I think uh, this is him trying to show or convince himself that he still wants to do this, that he still has what it takes, but I'm here just to show him that he's not. And, uh, you know, it's fine. You know, take your retirement, you know, enjoy your golf, and um, let, uh, I'm the, I'm the new, I'm the new champion and I'm the, I'm the new king of this division and I'm going to make sure he knows that. Izzy thrives in tough situations. Izzy dominated Paulo Costa very quickly because he was mad at him. He doesn't like Drake's Duplessis. I'm excited to see that angry Izzy. I'm excited to see that angry Izzy as well. And like you said, in tough situations, look at the fight, his last fight against Alex Pereira. Yeah, you want to talk about a tough situation. You're going against a guy that's beat you three times and against Drickus Duplessis, a very big, physical, oh. awkward fighter where there's bad blood involved. This could be one of those moments where Israel Adesanya shines at his brightest. Yeah, on a personal level, uh, Israel Adesanya, I don't like it. Yeah, sure, he tries to bait and, and all that stuff. That's, that's up to him, you know. I'm a smart guy. Smarter than him, for sure. Um, I, like you said, it's about keeping a level head. Um, you know, if you look at, at war, if you look at, at fighting, as soon as you lose yourself in, in, with emotional, that's where, where the mistakes are made. Um, you have to keep level headed. I approach everything I do like I approach my fight. Where do you stand with him? Where, how are you going to take him down? Uh, just beat him up. That's the <laughs> yeah, yeah. plan. We have <laughs> a game cool. plan. I'm going to beat him up. But for me, it's... Uh, look, um, you have to honor those who came before you. Uh, he's the guy saying I'm the real African champion. But 
Look, you wouldn't have been able to do what you're doing mm -hmm. at home in South Africa if myself, Francis Ngannou, and Kamaru didn't pave the way for you. So you have to respect uh, your elders, and I'll make sure I, I do that to them. Yeah, at the end of the day, I'm coming to finish. Um, you know, I didn't get a finish in my last fight. I've only had two decisions in my in my career, and, and that's more than enough. Both decisions were incredible wars. So that's that makes it that makes it. I'm happy with that, but. I'm coming to finish, I'm coming to prove a point, and I'm going to do it in, in spectacular fashion. And for Israel, that's going to motivate him big time. That's going to piss him off. That's going to grind his gears. That's going to get in his head. That is going to force him to train his ass off. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see one of the most dangerous, nasty versions of Israel Adesanya that we've seen. Let's remember, Israel Adesanya, last time he was embarrassed against Alex Pereira, what did he do? He came back and he knocked out Alex Poltan Pereira. The bell of the ball, one of the top pound for pound fighters, a two weight champion, and the biggest star in all of mixed martial arts. And that's another thing. Don't think that that's not pissing Izzy off either. Of course it is. There was, there was a, a time, especially after the Strickland fight, for him, where I thought this is never happening. I mm -hmm. thought that was the end. And uh, you know, the, the, we had to give the, the fans this fight. The fans wanted this fight, and I think the whole fight world is looking forward to this fight. So, you know, I love the big shows. I love to, um, to entertain the people with my fights and fighting the best guys. And 100% mm -hmm. he is the next best guy. The battle promises to give us a lot of impressions, no doubt about it. Because apart from this whole story grounded in nationality, right now Israel Adesanya and Drikus Duplessis are world-class fighters. And such professionals are definitely not going to waste any time and will enter the cage with an intention to rip each other's heads off. And if Izzy manages to become the middleweight champion for the third time, it will be a new chapter in his story and development of the entire fight game. Leave your opinion in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new videos. And of course, hit the like button if you enjoyed this one. See you soon.